let's look at programming in C. So if you haven't watched the Linda videos going through C programming language, I highly recommend that you stop here and go through those videos and follow those examples as they will give you a head start on the rest of this week's material. So let's say we want to do a clear or a move. So we're trying to either clear a specific variable or we're trying to move one variable to the next. So let's initialize two variables called temp1 and temp2 of type unsigned char. So unsigned chars are unsigned 8-bit values. And let's load the value 5 into one of the variables. So temp1 is equals to 5. And let's assign temp2 to be the same as temp1. And in C notation, this is how you do it. And hopefully you can follow through this as you've watched the Linda videos. Now, if you've looked carefully in the previous slides with the instruction sets, there are specific assembly instructions which allow you to swap the four bits or what they call nibbles uh, of a specific variable. So for example, we want to swap the first four bits of temp1 into the last four bits and vice versa. Now in C, you are able to do that as well. So there are these operators which you can perform to swap the nibbles together. Now let's look at this bitwise operator. This is called bit shifting. So this is shifting the bits left or right, depending on which notation you use, to however many bits you want to shift it. So let's say you have OXOF, which is 00001111. By bit shifting it four across to your left, this becomes OXF0 which is 11110000. And similarly, if you shift it by five, it shifts it by five bits to the left. If you shift it by two, it shifts it by two bits to the left. Now let's look back at assembly. So these are instructions from your instruction sets for the PIG microcontrollers. And this is the doing the exact same thing as what we did in the previous slide in C. So as you can see, there are a lot more instructions that you have to call and that's what the C programming language handles. So even loading five into temp one, in assembly, you would require three steps. You have to clear the variable temp one. You need to move five into what they call the working register, and then moving the working register into temp one, thus allocating temp one with a value of five. However, we, cannot, we can see that, as I mentioned before, swap F is the function to swap the four bit nibbles of temp one. So as you can see with C and assembly, there are pros and cons to each. So generally C is a lot more easier to deal with as it's a lot more high level. You don't deal with the low level uh, direct interface with the hardware itself. However, there are some nifty assembly instruction sets which are useful in specific applications. Now let's look at another example of an operation. So this is an assembly. We're trying to increment or decrement or complement. So in our case, PIC has an instruction set which allows you to increment a specific variable. So you can inc f or incf that increments temp1. You have dec f which decrements temp1. And then this would change the status bits. So remember the status register, which is uh, hardwired into the arithmetic computations of the microcontrollers. So if you decrement temp1 and temp1 reaches 0, the 0 bit of status register would set, will be set high because it indicates that that arithmetic operation has triggered this bit to be high. And similarly, you have your carry. So as mentioned in those examples before, you have, uh, if the most significant bit requires a carry, your C bit of status register would be set to high. Now in C equivalent, you have similar notations for incrementing and decrementing. So as you can see, there are multiple ways of denoting this increment. So you have temp1 is equals to temp1 plus 1, which is pretty uh, pretty standard. 
Now there's shorthand notation for incrementing, which is plus plus. And also you have this compound operators, which is plus equals. So basically plus equals means temp one, plus one equals to temp one. Now let's look at multiple bit manipulation. As you've seen in the instruction sets, there are two categories or three categories of manipulation in assembly. So you have your single bit manipulation and you have multiple bit manipulation. Now let's look at multiple bit manipulation. So C has the same capabilities as assembly does. And as you can see, let's say we initialize two variables called temp1, temp2, and we initialize another variable called test just to put our results in. So let's look at an AND operation. So in C, the operator is the ampersand, and that applies an AND operation for the respective bits of both variables. And you can see the result for test should be 0011000. And the same can be done with a bitwise OR operation, and also the exclusive OR operation. Now, if you compare this with assembly, as mentioned before, there are these multiple bit manipulation instructions, and they do perform a bitwise operation similar to C. And there's a few examples of that. Again, it's worthwhile knowing, but it's not required for this subject. Now, there are a few special instructions that are available to be used in assembly and once again this is just pros and cons of low level language versus high level programming languages so there is a function called rotate which actually rotates the bits so if you rotate left the most significant bit becomes the least significant bit and everything else shifts to the left once now you can get an equivalent in c and I'd like to see you guys complete that for the interactive session and see what you can achieve in C for that. So remember the bit shifting that we introduced a few slides before, and hopefully you're able to achieve the same effect in C. Let's look at functions. In assembly, they're usually known as subroutines, and in C, as you remember from your Linda videos, you declare a function by the return type, the name of the function, and whatever input arguments you have, and you have to find that by the type and the actual variable name itself. So let's say we declare a function called decrement with an input as input, and then in a function called increment, we want to decrement an input. So notice the incorrect syntax because the return type of that function that's declared is of type int and by just saying decrement input the return type is void which is an incorrect syntax. So the correct syntax is seen two lines below where you have to put uh, the result into a specific variable. And then down here, this is an example of how you declare the function. So you declare the function and then you elaborate and expand the function. Now, in assembly, you have these go to or call return or return from interrupts, and they act similarly to subroutines. So they act similarly to how you call a function, and from a function, you can call another function and you can return out of the function and so forth. So once again, in the low level programming assembly, you have these direct interfaces with the hardware. In C, there is some discord between the two. Now, if we look at conditional branches, so these are condition based operations. These are just two that you use in assembly and we'll quickly skip over that to the equivalent in C. Now, this is also another set of conditional branch examples. So rather than just testing the bit, whether it's zero or not, you're actually decrementing and then skipping if the result is zero. 
So let's look at conditional branches in C. So the main ones that you would have is an if else statement. So if you watched the Linda videos, you should remember that quite well. So if the condition is true, you run the function within the declaration and then or else it'll run the second declaration. And in our case, we have an if else if and an else. So let's give an example of if temperature is less than 15, indicating 15 degrees Celsius, you want to turn the heat on. And or else if the temperature is greater than 40 degrees, you want to turn the heater off. And if it's within the two temperature ranges, you want then cool down. Now these are just a few miscellaneous examples in assembly. Uh, these are optional, so it's interesting to understand what's available in the low-level underlying direct interface with the microcontroller, but it's not needed for this subject.